So hi all, and welcome back to the to the workshop. It's uh, not a John Deere tractor restoration project tonight, but a DLTX 34 carburetor repair. Um, this carburetor is off my um, John Deere BW. Uh, there's been two or three videos posted on YouTube about it mainly feeding sheep. And um, just recently, it's been flooding quite badly when I've been trying to start it. Now initially, I thought it was possibly the old problem with the copper float. Um, as you can see, there's an odd repair here and one there. But when I took it to bits, the float is um, well, it's still airtight, still holds a vacuum. So it's not that. And so I've next turned my thoughts to the, the needle valve that lets the fuel into the carburetor. Well, as you can see, that has a rubber tip on it. And so generally they don't leak. Um, the seat that it goes onto is good. So it's come back to what I suspected all along. Was the fact that this carburetor is um, quite badly pitted inside it. I think in the past it's been sat for some time with water in it and, and generally um, just sitting inside the carburetor and rusting it up and causing a lot of pitting both in the main body but crucially inside this area here where the the nozzle goes and in the past what I've done is um, I've wrapped a bit of PTF tape round this end and a bit of PTF tape round the um, that end and when you put it in the nozzle there, it, sorry in the hole for the nozzle there it um, sort of seals it but it doesn't last forever and uh, eventually the nozzle becomes slack in the body and um, I've drawn a bit of a picture here on the whiteboard um, and as you can see there's the nozzle there's the tube that it sits in and as I say it was badly rusted out well pitted in this area here where the nozzle sits up to and where that bit of a ring is around the bottom of the nozzle, it was always a bit slack in here because it was badly pitted. And so, I think what's been happening is, as it's, what happens is that when the engine's running or trying to start, it's, it's not got a very good seal at this point, And it's pulling fuel, excess fuel, up past it and into the engine. Through the carburetor and into the engine on this side. As I say, in the past I've used PTF tape to try and stop that, but it doesn't last forever. I've, I've probably replaced it half a dozen times over the few months I've had the tractor. And so, what I've done, I put the carburetor body into my um, into that holder that I have. I'll bring it over here. Into that holder. So it sits inside here. I put that in my four jaw chuck on the lathe and I threw it all up so that this is obviously running central in the lathe. And what I did initially was I took a drill bit, put it up inside and recut the um, the area where the shoulder of the nozzle sits. And then I took a slightly larger drill bit and Recut this area so I drilled down inside and got a better finish. Well, perfect finish in there, and relined it all back up. And so I then had obviously had to do a bit of work on the nozzle. So I cut the old, I machined the old, um, for want of a better word, the old boss off the end and um, got another piece of brass and put a new boss on slightly bigger and I machined it down to fit in there as it should a nice interference fit 
and the idea is that when you push it back in like that it'll it'll all be nice and tight again up inside the uh, carburetor if we go back to the picture now my understanding is of these carburetors is that this area this area here due to vacuums created inside the carburetor fills up with fuel so it's always got fuel sitting in it and what happens is when you uh, open the throttle up on the tractor suddenly need, and the tractor suddenly needs more power the um, the nozzle is the air is sucked up through the nozzle and there's fuel sucked up through them holes that's why there's a load of them to um, to accommodate whatever level the fuel's sitting at and is, is the fuel excess fuel is drawn in to the engine giving it the um, giving it that extra bit of power and this this carburetor has always had a little bit of a a boggy down sort of place on it. It's always sometimes when you've opened the door, it's sort of just a little bit hesitant. So I'm still, and to be fair, I'm not 100% sure I'm barking up the right tree with it, but um, we'll give it a go and see what happens. I mean, if it doesn't work, then <laughs> I've just wrecked a carburetor body and I'm looking for a new carburetor body. But I, I think I might be um, in the right area with it because all the other ones I have, that nozzle is always quite tight inside the um, the actual carburetor body. Um, so yeah, so that's what we've really done. So hopefully we've tightened it all up again, made a bit of a seal. There's a spring holds that in. That spring there holds that in, and that sits in behind the um, the bowl nut, which obviously uh, screws on on the bottom there. Like, like that. And there's the bowl. The bowl sits sits in here. So yeah, I think um, we'll see what happens. Hey, as I say, I've either just wrecked myself a carburetor or we've um, we've cured the problem. Obviously, it's going to increase the size that um, of fuel that the um, the fuel well holds. But I don't think that personally, in my mind, I don't think that will matter really. Um, I haven't altered the metering at all, so it should it should be okay. But uh, we'll see. I'll get it all put back together. We'll put it back on the tractor. See what happens. Okay then. Thought that might be of interest. We'll be back to the um, tractor restoration soon. I've um, got various bits and pieces put back into it now. As, as hopefully you're going to see a video soon of the crankshaft being put in and main bearings. There's some main bearings sitting there, as you can see with the shims and that, but I'll make another video of that one. Alright then, thanks now, bye.